of City Hall, the home of the Dubuque Farmer's Market for 150 years. I'm Chrissy Hogue. I'm Kimberly Feltis. I am Jim Terry. Greetings. Kimberly, here we are. It's May, so it's early in the season, but are there lots of yummy things available? There are so many yummy things, Chrissy. We have lots of hearty crops that have made it through the winter. We have green onions, asparagus, spinach, all kinds of wonderful, wonderful things. And my personal favorite part of the show is shopping with the chef, and here we are with none other than Jim Terry. I Jim, am. What do you have in store for us today? Well, it's what they have in store. I saw this beautiful, crisp, juicy produce. In fact, the, uh, the somewhat brisk temperatures here have things just turgid this morning and I think that uh, we're going to have some great food production and some really delicious things happening in the pan. I brought a pan, a beautiful stainless steel pan. I think we're going to put everything in there, cook it, and eat it. And that's how this show works. We always have a chef on location. They're going to shop the market and then there will be a prepared dish at the end of the segment, which I'm going to eat. And so are you. Yes, yes I am. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to... Farmer's Market Live TV! Hi there, I'm, I'm here with Earl Moore, uh, Blue Sky Meats, the Brat Guy. Can you tell us a little bit? How'd you get that name, Blue Sky Meats? Uh, the girl was looking over our little thing at Cheryl. We live in Cheryl. And she was all looking over the mound, and it was so nice, and it was a blue sky and everything. That's where it got the name, Blue oh. Sky Meats. It was, it was ordained. Yeah. Tell us about your brats. Our brats are probably the best homemade. Everything we make is homemade. And we make veggie brat and brat with kraut, brat with cheese. And we sell them down here by the sandwich, too. So you're keeping up with all the health nuts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who does the baking? Mary, Mary Deer from Balltown does the bacon. She's our pie lady. And, and that's Mary Deer. Say hello, Mary. Hello, wave to us. Hi. <laughs> Those look fabulous. Is. That is some delicious stuff sitting on that table there. It's old-fashioned stuff is what we cater to. Hi, Mary. How is the rhubarb this year? We've got rhubarb everything. Tell us about it. The rhubarb is doing very good, and I use it to make my breads and my pies with the strawberries. I pick out a lot of butternuts, walnuts, and hickory nuts also. Did you see we've got these uh, hickory nuts and all the... How many varieties of nuts do you have over here? I have three of them. Butternuts, walnuts, hickory nuts. Do you pick all of those at, at your place? Everything but the butternuts. Where do you get the butternuts from? Uh, my daughter gets them for me. What's the secret to growing good rhubarb? Just get it planted good and fertilize it good. And put some manure in it when you plant it. And that's all I did. Give me a sample of that, Lynette. You taste this. Okay. Is that's hot? not the best brat. Lynette, give me another give me another sample. Mm. How is it? Them are veggie brats. Oh my god, that's a veggie brat? Are you kidding me? That no. does not taste like a veggie brat. That tastes amazing. They are juice goose juicy. And what do you think? Good. Oh that's juicy and good, that's for sure. And that's what we specialize in. Good food and it's homemade. And it's not made no big factory because we're just a little town in Cheryl. Our favorite. It is. It's good. Hey, Earl, thank you very much. You You've been you. great. Thank you for being here. Best of luck through the year. Okay, very nice. Good morning. Excellent. Good morning. How you doing? Good. Oh, you got beautiful stuff. Let's see what we got here. This bag of... That's kind of a good, yeah. Nice. Good morning. That looks wonderful. Yeah, it does. Looking for grit and that kind of wood. We're going to have to, how much wash we're going to have to do. Looks good. Have you washed? Has it been washed already? Oh, indeed. I'm, I've got an, a notion. Because of the fresh spinach and because I know there's going to be some uh, farm fresh eggs here somewhere, yes. I'm thinking we might do something that we've uh, actually swiped 
yep, that's whole fine. cloth from San Francisco can... known as Joe's Special. Yeah. Joe's Special is a pan dish that was sort of devised in the 20s or 30s, and you can still find various forms of it. Everybody claims to have invented it, oh, like the original margarita, everybody claims yes. to have invented it. Or the internet, yeah. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> okay. Anything else that you guys need today? Oh, probably. I... Oh, thank goodness you mentioned it. I saw some, don't you have some, uh, some, ball, some ball onions? Don't you have any knob onions oh, yep. somewhere? Right here. I need Not one. Here. I need an onion. Oh, okay. No, I mean, I need a big one. Do you have a, do you have a large onion? Yeah. Oh. That's what I need. I do have sauce up here. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I need one. I think one is actually probably going to do it. So that's the other. That's the 50 cents. Yeah, you wow. get it all back. Yeah. <laughs> you got a fin out of us. I'm going to throw this. There. That's beautiful. Right, well, I'm going to let to get a bunch of these for my house. We're going to stall. We're going to stall right there. Thank you very much. Have, Thank a, have you. a productive weekend. You did a great job. Bye bye. Yeah. This is Norm D. Young. He's the honey guy. You've got a lot of great honey out here. Well, tell, tell us where you're from first, Norm. I'm from B-Town, Wisconsin. B-Town. B-Town. Tell us about what's going on with the bees this year. Well, the bees they found out in the University of Illinois, that it's a virus that's going through the bees. And then we have uh, the bee mite that uh, builds up so much in the fall that it really is killing the bees. And then we have the farmers with all the pesticides putting out there, and that's, that's uh, putting a, a damper in the bees. So you're the guy in the, bi- in the, in the suit that goes in there? I just put a veil on. You don't wear a suit? I don't wear no suit. I just put a veil on. I've got three suits. You're a beach armor. <laughs> I, I just I just put the, uh, a veil over because the bees like to go for the eyes. The whole doggone thing in for the last couple of times I've been in, I've been getting stung in right in the tip of my nose. How many times have you been stung in the tip of your nose? How many times have you been stung? I got stung yesterday when I was in the bees quite a bit in the hands uh Although we have a special stuff we put on the hands to keep the bees away. so But we've been putting uh, special uh, chemicals that uh, kills the mites off. And uh, we're finding out that the cold weather up in the Wisconsin area is, is, is what's killing a lot of the bees, too, is the cold weather. And so uh, we know a fella that moved a bunch of his hives down to Mississippi. And the hives he had down there, he split them four times. He's coming back with 300 and... Uh, 60 high, uh, nooks and uh, 160 hives he's bringing back, he brought back. So we're trying to, we set all our bees up to see if we can get them on a truck and ship them down south next winter. Is your honey just awesome? Yes, it is. It's just right off the hive. All we do is take the, the frames in and take the caps off, or the cappings off of it, and then we just run it through the extractor, and then we put it right into the bottles, and that's what it is, raw honey right off the hive. I got to get me some of that. That sounds amazing for my tea. Take it with you. <laughs> grumpy Glenn, who doesn't look all that grumpy, and his wife Judy, they're with Galena Dips and Gifts, and you have a wonderful array here of seasonings. They smell wonderful. Glenn, Thank can you, you tell us a little bit more about what you have here? Uh, well, we have 15 different varieties of dips. We, ha- we make them all ourselves, and each bag makes two batches, and all the instructions are on the back for you. Um, we also have homemade soups and uh, f- uh, four varieties of those, and we do have organic dry rubs. Also, these can be used as seasonings versus just um, a dip. So, Judy, how did Grumpy Glenn do it explaining everything? You know what? He didn't do too bad, as a matter of fact. I've trained him well. And I just wanted to set the record straight. He is grumpy, even though he doesn't look it. (laughs) And we have a wonderful little manufacturing operation, and he is our supervisor. He's the, uh, the chief operating officer, and I am the CEO. And the creative talent behind making all of the various recipes for the dips and the soups. But I must say that the whole thing started because Grumpy Glenn grew garlic. And we just needed to do something in addition to having his garlic at the market, which comes later in the year. So we just started developing these a few years ago, and they've become huge hits. We do fundraising, wholesale, and, of course, we sell them locally. And it's just a fun little business for us. Now, Judy, what I really like is you can take somebody like me who has no culinary skills whatsoever, unlike Jim, and (laughs) make me look like a chef, make me look like I know what I'm doing here. So I do appreciate that about what it is you do here. (laughs) And we do have recipes on the back of each bag, which allows you to make 
other culinary delights in addition to dips? Because not everybody is a dip person. I don't quite get that, but no, that's what people dippy say. Myself. Yeah, yeah. So you know, but it, you make it pretty foolproof. I love it. Okay, love thank, it. You. thank you. Thank you. Holy cow! The strawberries. Which I've got to get into my garden. Fresh basil. I mint. More spinach. Beautiful. Look at this lettuce. A sprouted bread, which might be very important to our meal today, and champignon, pleurot, pleurot, the oyster mushrooms. I think that's what they, I think that's the correct name, but I don't remember anymore. It's been so many years. Look how beautiful! Look at these things. Look at these beautiful gills. Look how perfect. These are just picked. I mean, you can't you can't go out and get some stuff like this. It's been that's been on a shelf. I mean, retailers are doing a heck of a job these days, and things have improved drastically. But to be able to get things like this, so perfect and beautiful, and just cut off their original source, uh, the fruiting bodies are in perfect condition. It's just, and the aroma is like the essence, the perfume that is derived from Earth. Incomparable, incomparable. You got to have them. This is Mark Miller. This is the guy whose mushrooms Jim's talking about. Let's get him. All right. Hey, how are you doing? Great. Great. Can you tell us about uh, tell us about these mushrooms. I mean, Jim already expounded, but I would like to know where you find them and all that good jazz. Oh well, uh, I have a mushroom house at my farm that I grow them in, and uh, I pasteurize wheat straw and inoculate it with spawn and allow them to fruit. It's a really fun process. Is it dark? Or- it's, um, it's like a misty environment that's uh, kind of like dappled sunlight, like it's in a woods, you know. It's all certified organic, yeah. So, and the name of your company is Tree of Life. Can you give us a little more information about that, Mark? Yeah, um, well, it, it's a reference to the Garden of Eden and uh, the original way of life that we all lived. Yeah. Which, which is without anything... Yeah, which, which is uh, organic and natural and a peaceful lifestyle with lots of fresh food. <laughs> well, since we're in heaven, I'm searching for a new fig leaf. Can you get me one? <laughs> I do have figs growing in my greenhouse. You'd, that'd be great. When do those come out? Uh, fall. Come on by in the fall. We will. We will. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Yeah, we're looking at something here which is nutrition dense, but also dense with fiber and uh, relatively lower in calories. It's not a concentrated calorie situation. It's a concentrated nutrition situation. So, and it also is dense, dense, just texturally. Feel it. It, it just it it feels like an ingot. So we're not, again we're, we're, the, the whole idea. See, I, I, I love delicate, buttery things. Uh, you know, uh, dequois, cakes, uh, croissant, light, fluffy things are fun. As a as an excursion into culinary fun every once in a while. This is the kind of thing that you eat with regularity to encourage health and you develop a real love for it. When it's toasted and crusty and spread with a, a little bit of pure creamery butter. Ooh. Can't be bad. Or some honey. Oh yeah, a little oh, honey's yeah. lovely. Oh, wonderful. That's that's the kind of thing that your body starts craving after a while once oh, you've introduced it in, to your, Indeed, indeed. Which once is you, way yeah. better than craving sugar, so. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm here with Frank Sensel. His uh, family is been a staple of the farmer's market for three generations? Actually, four. Four generations. Right. Wow. Since the late 1880s. And you're known for your sweet corn, but you also have the secret of how to grow the perfect tomatoes. Isn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't tell you. Oh. Oh, can you give us just a little bit? <laughs> oh, it's just a lot of hard work is what it amounts to. We need some sunshine, though, to go with that. Ah, sunshine's <laughs> a key ingredient. Yes. Okay, so these are already about, th- what, three feet tall? Do you keep these in the container, or how, how do, what do you do with these? Yeah, we can leave these right in the container. If you want to, you carry them around, carry, carry them anywhere you want to go. Oh, wow. If you have a stormy day, bring them in the house. Cold night, bring them in the house. But uh, they're meant to stay right in these containers. Those are sturdy and strong. You usually yeah, see yeah. them encaged somehow by this, by this height. How do you keep them so strong? Oh, it's just a variety. I'm still trying to get some secret out of him. He's not giving it up. <laughs> oh, it's just a variety. <laughs> How many tomatoes uh, would you say you need to uh, to have about a dozen jars of salsa? <laughs> well, it depends upon the variety. On the cherry tomatoes, you probably would need a fair amount of plants. But if you go to a patio hybrid or a Goliath, maybe only three or four plants. Somebody buy me corn chips. <laughs> One of the primary ingredients for this dish is certified organic Black Angus beef from Black Angus Acres 
Ellen Stepflug is the proprietor of this operation, and uh, they have delivered to us this beautiful, beautiful, immaculate beef, which is going to be incorporated with the spinach, the onions, the olive oil, and of course the organic eggs, and scrambled into a savory, delicious mass seasoned with black peppercorn, and I'm rambling again, I always do that. But uh, what I wanted to ask you about was your operation and the kinds of animals that you have. Obviously, it's, it's black Angus, but what... Uh, what is the what are the dynamics of this kind of an operation? What is it really like to, to do this? You know, people sell it all the time, they buy it all the time, but how does it differ from what might be considered a standard cattle operation? There's a lot of work to it. Yeah, I dare and say. You were calving and you have to be out there when they're calving and make sure, you know, everything's alive and, and take it to the mother and the weather's been really hard on our calving this year with that oh, sleet indeed, and, that and the cold, the cold weather. The calf's coming up a 90 degree womb mm -hmm. and it's on the ground with that cold weather. So they had a a really, It's a slap in the face. Yeah, Absolutely right. Really and I think a lot of people don't really realize how much human involvement Right. There is in that process. Right. Think, well, it's an animal. They flop the right. things out. Right. The babies get up and they run around. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. It doesn't work it's a way. domestic right. creature that's been largely influenced by humanity, right. and you're hands-on. Right. So it's all the time. It's all time. All time. So this is a high time of activity. Are, do you get any time off? Do you get any kind of break from this? Not, well, they, they, after that, I mean, after the cabin, yeah, they go into the, the bigger pasture. And, yeah. And then you have to still check on them and make sure everything's there because we got coyotes and sure. other stuff, so they don't take your calves and run with them. So. Absolutely, absolutely yeah. right. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you very much. Good to meet you. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good day. All right. Our, our co-hosts, which really add a wonderful aspect to this show indeed, um, are prepping vigorously the spinach by pulling off the tough fibrous stems and the threads going up to the, uh, the leaves themselves. So we have nothing but tender spinach leaf. And that's nice. I'm doing one of the things that I am cursed to do. In addition to buffing glassware, my other curse is that I will always be prepping onions. But uh, both are rather therapeutic and can help uh, work out certain difficult personal problems that one might have. Now I've heard, Jim, I've heard that you can wear glasses. Is that why you wear glasses? Isn't it the, is it the onion itself that causes your eyes to water or is it because... Oh, it's in the onions, that's for sure. It's flashing in your eyeballs. Well, no, it's, it's, there's, there's gas. There's a, it's, it's a gas that gets into the air and it does, it is an irritant. But you can, you can damp that down by uh, putting them in cold water for a while, you know, running cold water over them. Uh -huh. uh, various methods have been talked about. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, uh, being outside too, it's great because everything just sort of blows away and I'm not noticing any, any issues. And this would be a really, this is a, a nice, nice warm onion, so this would be just blasting away. I'm not noticing anything either, and that's no. what I was really The ones that are really intense are the, are the white ones. Those white knob onions that you get in Mexican markets, which have a great, really vigorous flavor, are, will just absolutely bring forth the uh, yeah the sluices will be will be opened yeah well it's really good jim because if this onion was causing me problems i'd look like tammy faye baker i, I believe that yeah. calamity would never overtake you <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay these farmers markets tend to be showcases for people in the community and here's a perfect example can you tell us your name first of all uh my name is zach hermson Zach, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, what is it, uh, GreenDubuque.org? Green Dubuque. Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, we're working to get uh, greenhouse gas reductions reduced by 50% by 2030, and we're getting as many state insurers in support of this as we can from the community. So, so you need people to rally and support behind you. Exactly, exactly. I am here with Dan Lobianco. He is the executive director of Dubuque Main Street, and it is a pleasure to be down here early in the farmer's market, Dan. No sun, but it is not a bad day out here. Not a bad day, and any day at farmer's market is a good day. Amen! I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. We've been shopping for some wonderful food to make up something that Jim's going to be cooking for us later. Um, in the meantime, I wanted to get a little bit of the history of Dubuque's farmer, Farmer's Market here. Sure. You know, this is uh, the 163rd season, I believe, of Dubuque's Farmer's Market. Most of those here around City Hall on Iowa okay. Street and 13th Street. Okay. We've been around here, and we're, we're starting to get back up to the vendors of some of those early years, by the way. We grow every year by uh, four or five net net uh, growth in vendors. Now, you grew up in Dubuque, is that correct? That's correct. Um, you were a visitor to Farmer's Market from went early on? Sure, we've been getting sweet corn down here as long as I can remember, so absolutely. We'd walk farmer's market, get some baked goods and, and produce uh, all the time when I was a youth. 
And you you have been executive director at, at Dubuque Main Street for how long now? Well, it's 12 and a half years, so this is my 12th season of kind of leading the people who actually are the core of making Market Run my staff. That's got to be exciting to see and to see it come to life every Saturday. It, it's great to see. It's great to see the spring produce now and uh, and bedding plants and things that you get in spring and produce will peak uh, in, in early July. That's exciting. Yeah, we're get, everybody's getting planted and now that we've had some sun and rain, things seem to be growing really well. So Now Dan, how is Farmer's Market here in Dubuque a showcase for, for people that have been in Dubuque? Well, it really is a cultural showcase because we've got arts uh, artists here, we've got uh, musicians here, and it's a social gathering. It really is the place where Dubuqueers meet and, and experience all that is Dubuque in the Dubuque area. We've got dogs, we've got coffee people. Uh, people need to experience it once, and I, I guarantee once they do, they'll be hooked. You can even experience the culinary arts now down here. Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a place where the cultural community meets every Saturday. Well, Dan, I want to thank you so much for being on Farmer's Market TV today. It's been a pleasure talking to you, as always. It's always a pleasure to have you. We appreciate you coming down, and, and we appreciate uh, just slightly clashing shirts as I well. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, Jim, have you ever cooked anything in the middle of a busy street? Indeed. <laughs> you have? Yes. I don't remember it very well, but I know that it happened once before. Oh, at least, maybe twice. Oh, maybe three times. We maybe don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, I, it's not even a problem because I just shove them to the back of the brain, and they, that's where they, those memories die, and they never return. It's beautiful. So there were people, were they surrounding you, or was it, I mean, was, yeah, were, was so it I in think, America? Or yeah, I, I was definitely somewhere lost in the Midlands somewhere. I was, I was oh. here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know we'll anymore. It's a long time ago. <laughs> so if, I can, if I can find these lost memories again, if I can bring, re retrieve these lost memories. Well, having a newborn baby isn't going Help with yeah, whoa, baby memory. brain. Yeah, yeah, I know that, that women claim to be afflicted by it, but holy cow, if uh, if my memory was getting shaky before, yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm pretty shot Sleep at this point. Sleep deprivation will kill you. Will kill my niece was that. in town, and I asked her how her trip to France was, and well, I've been back for a year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Jim what? And, yeah. Hey, you okay. She went. Come yeah, on. Yeah, there we go. Oh, we, we, we must take credit for these small things, otherwise our, our self confidence will be completely shot. <laughs> You know, it is interesting to talk to a man about his perspective after childbirth. Yes, well. <laughs> Usually it's just all about us, right, Chrissy? <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, the uh, our spinach is prepped. We have our onions prepped. We've got some eggs cracked. We may actually use a little bit more. We're going to see how this all the how ever the proportions work out in the pan. Um, we have our beautiful black Angus, acres, beef. We have some asparagus, we have some onion, uh, pardon me, some florots, which we're going to, or oyster mushrooms rather, which is how you're going to see them marketed. Um, and we're going to mince those very finely, I think. We're going to incorporate those in here. We want to get things going pretty quickly, and I want to start heating up my pan. But what we were looking for was some local hard cheese, of which there are many fine local cheeses produced around here. I couldn't find any yet at this market currently, but uh, this is a Spanish manchego, which is a really nice cheese. You could also use a nice, a, a really inexpensive Wisconsin grana, which is sort of a, a Parmesan type cheese. We're going to mince up our, our uh, oyster mushrooms here because we're going to make duck salt. The equivalent of duck salt. Oh, yes, smell yeah. They got that wonderful sweet. Yeah. Check it out. You called this Take something else? Well, the, the, I believe, if I'm correct, mm. the, the French term in general for oyster mushrooms is pleural. Yeah. We're going to cut off most of the of the okay. woodier part of the stem. Oh, these really, that's, that stem is pretty tender. It's pretty. It's, I was thinking They're kind of lovely. But we'll see. We, we still, we, we've got to, we got to mince we them up. So that's, uh, we need. we're just going to, yeah, we're going to tear them off just to avoid any unnecessary... Uh, Fibrous like Yeah. Sure. There you go. This looks like fun. It does. Oh, they are indeed. So that's. Oh. There's nothing rubbery. like a fungus. They're kind oh, of yeah. rubbery. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> they're woodsy. They're, they're very interesting. Oh, they are indeed. There's nothing like it. Ad adds complexity. Uh, if you've ever had beef Wellington ever, you ever have beef oh, yes. Wellington wrapped in pastry? Yes. Not. Okay, well, it's, like, it's usually a chunk of uh, Chateaubriand or, or, or beef tenderloin that has been wrapped in puff pastry. Before they wrap it in puff pastry, they schmear duck cells around the outside, and duck cells of mushroom and usually shallot. All, right, all finely minced together and then cooked down until it's black. It was a kind of a black paste that they wrap around it, or uh, rub around it, and then wrap it in the puff pastry. And that really imbues this wonderful, dark, deep oh. flavor. It makes it incredible. It's really, it's fantastic. But it also adds flavor to other dishes, too. So that's our next show, is Beef Wellington. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Out here in the middle of the road. <laughs> we'll have the ritual slaughter of the cow right in the middle of the street here. Best components of a farmer's market is culture. And we're here with live musician. Eric Christensen. <laughs> tell, uh, tell us what you're doing here. Well, Mike Breitbach, 
and his family always set up this kiosk and they invite musicians local musicians down to play local musicians yeah, that's right one hour sets throughout the day through the farmer's market and so i always take the early sets most times how many people play do you how many people hang out all day um you might see five different musicians during the day sometimes groups sometimes drums sometimes oh my goodness it's a blast what are you going to do for us i'll play old dirt hill by dave matthews dave matthews i love it Farmer's Market is just a real thrill, you know. How is Farmer's Market a great showcase for local talent? Well, there's a lot of uh, hidden talent in this uh, old area, and uh, a lot of great people you don't hear on the stages of uh, the clubs and things all the time, so it's a chance for uh, regular people that don't get to play for everybody to uh, get out and air those songs out and uh, show people what you got, and uh, you'd be surprised about a talent that's working around the hills around here, and uh, how many, great thing. how many people? How many people get to get up there? I mean, it's like several bands, musicians. Well, it's only uh, you know from uh, early morning till noon, so uh, you can only keep the street blocked up till around noon, and uh, so we cram a lot into a few hours. And, uh, <laughs> I'm just one of the regulars. Uh, I played last night over at Catfish Charlie's. I uh, did a three-piece uh, electric trio thing, uh, playing the blues. And, uh, so the uh, the local music scene is alive and well at, at Farmers Market. It is. It's very alive and very well. And, uh, God bless America. We love Denny Garcia. <laughs> now, week after week, Farmer's Market is a wonderful place to get farm fresh oh, eggs. Um, this is a perfect example right here. Tell us a little bit about your eggs. Who are you? Um, I'm Alan Ernst. Like, we get these from Jim Ball. He's out at Cheryl. Okay. He's got free range chickens. Uh, he gets them fresh every day. He's got like 300 chickens he picks from. Oh, my. So he gets a, a bunch every day. He's one of our market vendors and that there, so we help and him sell his eggs. Oh, I love him. You really seem to take to talking to the people and, and oh, being I, here I week after week. I would for the world. That's wonderful. <laughs> How long have you been down here peddling uh, at Farmer's Market? I've been down here for five years, and Carol and them have been down here for 17 years. Excellent. They were Excellent. one of the first vendors that were down here when they opened up. That's great. Well, we're glad to have you on board. Thank you much. We are melting our onions and our mushrooms and getting them kind of schmooze together and that is uh i didn't know schmooze was a cooking term it's going to uh yeah sure i mean it's it's uh co-mingling <laughs> the uh juncture of vital essences co-mingling you've, you've got freshly ground pepper in here oh a good amount now one time i had i offered somebody freshly ground pepper once and they said what makes it fresh and i said no no no, no it's freshly ground which is yes. the difference, but, right. I mean, is there any? Well, no, it, the whole idea is sort of like going to a gas station for one of their fresh hot dogs. <laughs> that is on, that's on their little placard above the rotating uh, 
tor torture device there. Fresh. Like you, it looks fresh like something from the Spanish Inquisition. The That's hot dogs are fresh. That's an oxymoron. Correct. But, you know. yeah. Correct. <laughs> Oh, so this is your beloved pepper grinder here. Yeah, so yeah. That's what makes it freshly ground. Right, you got peppercorns in there <laughs> and you, you grind it. So that, yeah, because okay. then, then the volatile oils are still intact. It's like coffee. You know, if you grind your coffee a week before and then it's put it through the machine, oh man, you've lost everything. Do you know if I tried to flip it like that, it would just like it's, it would not be good. It's really just a You'd couple of uh, Chrissy, a, couple, a, a, a couple of flips and you'll have it. You'll have the technique down. So Jim, what I want to know is how is that twenty-five dollar camper stove working out for you there? Well, to invoke a reputed retort by Viking hordes, praise not the day until it is ended. The, the sword until it has been tried, the beer until it has been drunk, and the woman until she has been burnt. So we're going to try to avoid the last part. I'm not sure if burnt was a metaphor or whether they were talking about actually burning them. But the point is, basically, let's not count the chickens before they're hatched. Yes, so or the cart before the. Holding up well, all's well now. I don't want well, if, if, if we run out of fuel or if there is a mechanical failure, I will do a little dance of rage and fury. Okay. Something smoking. Well, 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 we and that's an onion. That. Now you I use know what? This or something? Oh, it's something. like crystal no. burning. Actually, what's burning is the paint. The paint <laughs> is burning. So you I, had to ask, Gary. You had to ask the question. So I think I think basically what we have here. Is a mishmash of. <laughs> there will be justice in a free market society, I think is the point. It's organic paint. <laughs> justice in it's a free market. Yes, exactly. free market. All righty, well, we have some leeks here, some beautiful looking onions, some radishes. Now, who's responsible for this? Who, who, are, who do we have here? Uh, it's Lois and Claire Herding. We live in, in Makokoda. Okay, and that's where this is all grown? Yeah, that's where we grow and everything. Wonderful. And how long have you been involved with Farmer's Market and growing these wonderful vegetables? Since 1975. Wow. <laughs> so over 30 years. Yeah. That's one, almost 40. <laughs> We're getting up almost to 40. Yeah. Now, what exactly do you do with the leeks? Uh, or what is something that can be done with the leeks? The leeks, you can use it the same as onions. You know, people are like, they're allergic to iron, they can use the leeks and it's fine. Because his sister's allergic to onions and she tried the leeks and it's good. So you know? it's got, does it have the same strong flavor as yeah, the onion? It's got, I don't want to say as strong of a flavor, but it's, it's, you know, it can be used, anything you put onions in, you can use it. You know? Can I smell it? It is, it's just a real mild yeah. onion flavor yeah. and smell. Mm, that's great. Leeks. I never knew what leeks were. <laughs> yeah, in soup and salad, you can use leeks too, you know. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Thank you so much for being on our show today, Farmer's Market TV, and we are so happy to have you here. Well, thank you very much. You know, Kimberly, we have some wine butters here today. Do you have any recommendations, Jim, on... Which wines? You know, I haven't seen the vendors. I, I saw some wine bottles stacked up right around the corner on a table, but I was rushing here with pan and ingredients clutched firmly in my hands, and I wasn't able to really investigate and scope it out. Well, um, for there's a also plate special. What would we be looking at? Would we be you know, looking at a breakfast food? I don't know. I know that a couple of the wine producers also produce grape juice from local grapes, and that's wow. pretty exciting. I've had that. And I had it from a vendor that used to, two years ago, was right around the corner over there. I don't know if it's the same group we'll or not. We'll have to look into that. Chris. Check so it out. looking red? Is it like yeah, it's red. red with meat? It's like, it's like a Concord type. So more grapey. And uh, yeah, oh, big time. Okay. And it'll be a little bit sweet, but for breakfast, why not? You know? Oh, definitely. Not only did we bring the wine, but we brought the vignoble. Courtney Bryson from Stone Cliff Winery. Correct. And, um... Do you want to tell us a little bit about this wine? We're here to pair this with the breakfast that Jim's making. Well, this is our Purple Cow, actually. This is one of our um, top sellers. It's pretty simple wine. It's kind of a Concord grape flavor. Um, very simple, but yet it's good for all types of people. It's kind of like a, actually a church wine. It's oftentimes served at Mass. What I want to know, Courtney, are you one of the young ladies out stomping the grapes as we see on I Love Lucy? I am not, <laughs> but I will have to do that. Should we oh, look how pretty. Look at that lovely color. This looks gorgeous. Look at the color of that. Okay, now. Oh. No, that's not cough syrup. That is delicious Concord grape wine. Correct. From Stone Cliff Winery. Mm -hmm. We're here with Courtney. I'm going to pass that along. Mm. I know that you're eager for that. I, I heard, I, I've been waiting. I had heard they were selling a Concord type, but I have never, I've not actually seen it. Oh, but yes. then and now you know. And then we have to let oh, you get back to your to position, don't we, so yes. that you can go. Yes. Farmer's oh, Market. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. We've added the eggs. Look. We 
got a mess of eggs in there. Now, Jim, is this is this Ooh. meant to be kind of a quicheing effect, or no, no? It's actually it's meant to be a scramble. It's a big sloppy mass, okay. and we scoop it out in big sloppy chunks, like with a trowel. Oh. And that uh, we'll be all good. Wonderful. Where is our trowel? We need a trowel. Well, we got our we got our burger flipper here, which is this wonderful we uh, artifact salvage from my restaurant. Yeah, that's a good. One. And that's Jim Terry's special here, made fresh at the Dubuque Farmer's Market. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've committed the technical error of jamming a tremendous amount in my mouth at this point. So we'll bid you. Thanks for coming. We look forward to seeing you the next time on Farmer's Market Live TV.